what is up and welcome back to Grand Prix World. Um, I have done everything I can to try and make sure this does not crash on me again. That involves basically off cameraing the Argentinian round. Uh, we got a 8th place with Pedro Diniz and a 20th with Mikasalo thanks to his heart engine blowing up, which was fun. <clears throat> um, Diniz is continuing to show surprisingly good pace, actually. Um, he qualified in 11th, I think, just outside the top 10, and managed to make gains throughout the race to, to finish 8th. I mean, that was an 8th on merit, not uh, due to attrition or anything. Uh, let's bring you up to speed with the news, and then we'll take a look at what's happened since we last hung out. Um, so, Schumacher won with... Eddie Irvine taking pole. That traitor John Barnard has uh, quit as our technical chief and joined Jordan. Um, as I mentioned, Mikasalo had an engine problem. Both McLarens made the top six. Uh, Jean Alessia signed for Jordan. And Johnny Herbert will be staying at Sauber. Fastest lap went to Mika Hakkinen, not a surprise. Uh, Minardi have signed Olivier Panis, which was a pretty bold move. I, I think actually they've completed their driver lineup. I'm not sure. Um, both our cars had a slow start, and that's primarily down to us not having a traction control system. Uh, we're not really in a position to develop one at the moment, but it's something to bear in mind. That's what happened, by the way. Shinji Nakano, the Japanese pay driver, has in the end signed for us, so we have two pay drivers for the next three seasons, and I cannot tell you how important that is, especially given that, at the moment, no one seems prepared to uh, give us a works engine deal or a works tyre deal. Um, <clears throat> Hugo Boss will sponsor Ferrari, and D2 Systems will sponsor Williams next season. We signed Tim Edwards um, from Jordan as our new chief mechanic. Uh, we didn't do any testing, which apparently is a surprise to people. And um, Benetton have signed John Newhouse. Craig Pollock did a bollocks badumts job last round. And Luca de Montezemolo has won the best manager of the... Let's call it manager of the month, even though it isn't. Interestingly as well, we made a profit of $428,000 which is massive. And given that a computer-aided manufacturing capacity costs in total 369000 I've gone ahead and splashed the cash to um, make sure that money's working for us. Given that we have enough money now um, to, <clears throat> to hopefully cover the final build and prep of uh, next year's cars, depending, I had to restart the design process on our 1999 car after the design we had was actually um, in contravention of the new regulations. So I've set 60% of the design office on that while 40% have been working on um, our new diffuser. We've now reached the uh, computational fluid dynamics simulation stage of development. After that we'll build a model and then we'll take the model to the wind tunnel and if all looks good then we will stick it on the car. Technology, we're not doing anything. We're not doing anything on driver aids. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the staff. So we have Denise bringing 9.6 million a season, and Shinji Nakano will bring a, f a further 2.9. Um, really, really important. It's not the most inspiring driver lineup I know, and it's probably going to bug some of you that we're, we're stuck with this lineup for, for three seasons, really, unless I fire one of them, which I'm reluctant to do, actually. Um, but we'll see. Um, still got an open test driver slot. Um, what I am tempted to do is to do what Prost have done. Now, Prost have done it wrong, in that it wasn't that Jan Trulli was injured. He has been permanently demoted to test driver and they have consciously brought Stefan Sarazan up to the second driver slot. Now it's a shame really because that would make Trulli very unhappy and much more likely to sign for us as a regular 
regular driver. What I'm tempted to do is to try and get him in the test driver slot and then in the course of the season switch him and Nakano around and that means we can squeeze an extra 2.9 million out of Nakano and kind of swizz him really um, by giving his seat to Trulli when it matters. Um, although 1.4 is a lot to drop at this stage in our development as a team for a driver that we might not actually be able to get into a race seat. I don't know if there's conditions attached to switching your drivers around like that. He's good in the rain, um, but then so is Deniz, weirdly. Deniz has been on fire this season, so let's let's hold off on that for now. We already signed our commercial manager, and I've grown the commercial staff significantly um, this turn. Two experts, one very good, and a further two um, good. I've also added to the design department. And the only open slot we have left is for our chief, uh, technical chief. John Barnard is leaving us, despite my efforts. And Gary Anderson will sign for us, but only for one season. Um, I did give Ross Braun a cheeky phone call, but he's just not interested. Um, Patrick Head costs far too much. Adrian New has already been signed. See, this is the this is the area where I don't mind dropping the cash here and um, chief designer. But to be honest, I'm I'm thinking Anderson's got the, the most chance of developing, but we might not necessarily be able to take advantage of that. So let's try and get Leo Rest from from Sauber. Uh, the Sauber wasn't a bad car this year, as I recall historically. So. I'm guessing he'll do an okay job. Let's see if he'll sign for us for two years. He will. So we're gonna we're gonna take him at his word on that because he costs about half as much as Gary Anderson and provides twice the service. We can always fire him if he goes backwards. So we've now filled all our head of department slots. Important stuff. Designers all have jobs. <clears throat> Let's go down to manufacturing and get some spare parts because we're gonna have to rebuild the uh, engine on Nicasalo's car for San Marino. So we'll take care of this. No testing again because it just adds wear to the car that we can't really manage to deal with. Um, so Deniz is in car 3 which has picked up some damage for some reason. No, no I've read that wrong. Car 3 just has wear. Okay, so we can get both our cars into great condition, actually. Um, so Deniz is in car 3. Let's get rid of all his wear and tear. And then Salo is in car 2. And then we just need to repair the damage to the engine. Done. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. What I'm going to do is just save the game really quick because crashes will happen. Now, what's going on in sponsor world? Still no team sponsor, not going to happen. What I've done is I've taken the staff off of the Ford deal and I've gone for Mugen Honda. They only ever, at most, give out partner deals. Um, but you can leave staff on to negotiate a small cash bonus. It's nowhere near the size you would get with a works contract. But what's really important is, if we're only going to get a partner deal anyway, then I'd rather go for a, a partner where we only have four squares to fill rather than five and six, which is the case with the others. Um, this means we'll, we'll seal the deal much faster. And when the end result is the same, then time becomes a bit more of an important consideration that we can then use on cash sponsors. Tires, we're getting absolutely nowhere. I'm beginning to think we're going to be stuck with a customer deal. It's just not going anywhere. It's, I'm not interested in switching to Goodyear at all. Um, so we'll stick with Bridgestone and we'll see what happens. Uh, we have signed S signed with Esso for one season, uh, 220000 as a customer. Not happy about having a customer deal here either, but it did free up 20% of our staff, which we've broken up between uh, Castrol, who I hope to make a title sponsor, and Intercond, which is a quick one square for 
not quite half a million, but we're in the ballpark. Have a sip of beer. So that means our VIPs coming to San Marino are Mugen Honda, Intercond, and Castrol. Happy, happy days. So with that in mind and the cars in race condition, let us do some qualifying. Now I'm happy with the drivers as they are. No setup points to spend because we're not doing testing. I'm going to keep Deniz on the soft tyre. It seems to be working out for him. And then we're hedging our bets with Salo. And... Kaboom! So, now we actually want to do these things on camera. Yeah, quite happy with all that. So, what's the dealio here? No problems on the cars so yet, but we haven't sent them out. Um, I'm going to go for a banker. 19 degrees with a decent wind. Uh, weather could change. Weather could change. So, Sarlo can go out first. On a sight lap. And we'll leave Deniz in the box, because to be honest, Deniz has by far, based on recent form, the greatest chance of um, putting in a surprise lap that gets us into a grip position we weren't expecting. Um, I've begun to really lose faith in Salo. Um, this is the first time I've played this game with Salo as a driver and had him perform so badly in comparison to Deniz. Never seen it before. But again, that's the beauty of this game, that you know, driver form is a very real thing. Both the Stewarts come out early. That's a surprise as well. Um, I'm not entirely sure what their strategy is there. The AI is, for its age, quite complex. Um, normally you will see Minardis and Tyrrells hit the track first, as you would in real life at that time, because it gets sponsor airtime and so on and so forth. Um, but also Schumacher's out very, very early. Let's crank it up, please, Mr. Salo. But, you know, it's good if, if Schumacher wants to come out early, then Schumacher can come out early. Um, let's switch this screen here to look at Salo. Watch him bin it into the barrier, no doubt. Now, um, while we're watching him do his quick lap, the good thing about taking a partnership with Mugen Honda is, although, again, you have trouble where you're not really getting upgrades and you're not getting the full support of a manufacturer, we wouldn't be getting that anyway, and the Mugen is it's far superior especially in power terms and given that we have a and well, let's not say it's not terrible let's put it that way both Benetton's and the Jordan out by the way um we will go top straight away with Salo of course we do they're the only ones who've done a lap call him back into the pits um we have a car that's it's John Barnard designed um, next year, which means if our design office gets its arse in gear, it should be aerodynamically capable, much more capable than this car. I don't know who designed the 98 car for arrows, but it wasn't Barnard, as I recall. Um, now, given that we should have a, a much better chassis next season than we have by default, just by virtue of who's heading the design office, that enables us to use that extra power. And it's really important for us that we didn't go backwards on the engine front, and I'm confident that's, that's not going to be the case. Um, we could always go Mechachrome, but the power advantage Mechachrome has over Mugen is really pushed back by the fact it's got severe reliability problems, and it costs. It costs money. When we can get free Honda engines, I don't see why we should be uh, paying for engines that will finish races less often. Um, Salo is three tenths off Jan Magnussen. Not encouraging. Let's see. No problems on his car, at least. 
Well, if that's how you're going to be, Sarlo, go out again. Put some more rubber down. The Minardis are finally venturing out. I don't know who that is. I think it's Esteban Tuero, I think. Fisichella tops the times at the moment, ahead of Schumacher, surprisingly. Ferrari have been a bit weird this time, actually. Um, as I recall in the previous rounds, we've been we actually outqualified Jacques Villeneuve uh, in the Williams, but we've also outqualified Schumacher before now. Um, I don't know what's going on there. Whether it can it can be all kinds of things. It can be even a setup issue. It can be the the AI is spending its setup points in the wrong area potentially. The main thing is though is that we are doing oh lock up for Salo there. Watch out for that. Uh, we're doing much better than I anticipated, actually. Given a weak car, a weak engine, um, we don't have infrastructure, really, that enables us to run the team optimally. But we're getting through it. And this seems like a good time to send Diniz out. Now, I'm really, 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 really hoping that Salo puts in a better lap, because I can't... I, he shouldn't be behind the Stewarts. I, I just don't see... Unless Stewarts have had an engine upgrade, because they do have a works deal, that we should not be behind the Stewarts, really. The Saubers you can almost understand, um, <clears throat> but we should definitely be ahead of the Prosts and the, the Stewarts on a good day. So that's kind of my defining criteria now, um, that if we're not out-qualifying, particularly the Prosts, then the driver isn't pulling his weight. And I think it justifies me then to uh, maybe switch him for our ridiculous head test driver. <sighs> he doesn't improve. What a git. Come on, Dennis, work some magic. Let's have some beer. Now, my hope is that he doesn't get in the way of Diniz too much. I think I left enough of a gap that we should be able to make it to the end of the, uh, the lap without them encountering each other. But given the performance deficit between them, I wouldn't necessarily hold my breath. Shinji Nakano on a 1-3-1-5-2-3. So Minardi and Tyrrell really aren't testing either. Um, you can tell that simply because they're evidently not getting the best out of their respective chassis. Okay, in comes Salo. Come on, Diniz. Into fifth. Good man, good man. See, and, like, obviously, um, drivers have different driving styles, which is going to... Um, it's going to affect how they synergize with a particular engine, a particular gearbox, a particular design, all in all. Um, and perhaps this car just suits Diniz much better than it suits Salo, but the point is that what, what Diniz is showing is what the car is capable of with an average driver. Um, I would historically rate Salo as a better driver than Deniz. So Deniz, I don't think Deniz is overperforming. I think Salo is underperforming. Um, and with that in mind, he's he's showing what the chassis is capable of. Let's just summarize it as that. He's showing what the car is capable of and the fact that you know Salo isn't getting an equal performance is going to it's going to cost us long term in the constructors because I mean as it stands now obviously this isn't how we're going to finish necessarily but if we get say Deniz qualifying 7th or 8th as you know we have done previously all it takes then is for him to maintain position and three cars in front to have some kind of problem. And we pick up points. And points in the first season for Arrows basically guarantees us a much, much higher payout from the FIA than we would get otherwise. I'm not happy with Salo. I'm very happy with Deniz. 
I'm not happy with the track conditions. That's the summary as we stand at the moment. I'm going to cut the video here, let a bit of time go through, let the track improve, and we'll get back together shortly. See you soon. Welcome back. It has just begun raining, which means it is time for Deniz to get his second run underway immediately. There's almost 40 minutes of the session left to go, which doesn't rule out the possibility of the track drying out towards the end of the session, so I'm not going to use up any more of Sarlo's laps. Um, I'm going to put another run in for Deniz because now he's got some tyres on that have been through the heat cycle, he might be able to get a little bit more out of them. And we do have some rubber coming down on the racing line. If he can improve even slightly, um, it gets us into a top four position, which is phenomenal. And that way, you know, it's locked in if the rain continues. And if the rain doesn't continue, then we've retained six laps for both drivers to put them out at the end when the track's drying off to see if we can't um, get the drop on teams that haven't been so smart and conserved um, laps for the end of the session. Either way, we're in a good position, because even if it rains through to the end of the session and we don't send the cars out again, that means we've put that much less wear into these tyres. Um, that enables us to start the race on heat-cycled tyres that aren't particularly um, knackered, and that's a technical term, and basically it's, it's just it's just having that extra cards in your hands, I suppose. It opens up possibilities in the race, it means we've conserved wear and tear on the car, we've conserved wear and tear on the tyres, and we've qualified strongly with Deniz in particular. I mean, 12th I, I could take for Solo, but I'm not happy with it. I think the car's capable of consistent top 10 qualifying. And yeah, we haven't gained, but also the the track has the track has got quite wet quite quickly compared to what we've seen with light rain previously, um, where we've been able to get a fast lap out before it drops two points. Wasn't the case this time. Let's see... Oh, actually, Diniz was faster, ever so slightly. Um, so close to fourth position. So, so close. A tenth of a tenth. A thousandth of a second. Um, a hundredth of a second, sorry. Um, incredible. Incredible performance. Given that, you know, we have... Uh, yeah, we're on the back of a Williams... Then there's just a Benetton's and a single Ferrari in front of us. And behind us, we have a Ferrari, both McLarens, a Jordan, both Saubers, both Stewarts. Incredible. Incredible. He's doing the business. I'll put him some more fuel on board and switch into another set of tyres. Um, have I done the same for you? No, I haven't. Your tyres aren't even wearing, so you can keep those on. I'm going to cut the video again here, and uh, I'll monitor the weather and let you know if anything changes. Welcome back. The rain has stopped. The Prosts have uh, joined us for qualifying, and we're now sitting 8th and 16th. Um, I'm still waiting for the end of uh, the drying process to conclude, and ideally I'd like an extra square of rubber on the racing line. Uh, to aid in that, we're going to send out our test monkey uh, make a solo. Uh, the track temperature has dropped a degree which helps engine power and tyre wear so bingo. Um, although it's not necessarily good news for Mr. Solo because the harder compound isn't getting up to temperature properly whereas the softs are uh, which could explain the uh, issues in um, performance difference between Deniz and Salo, although I wouldn't say explained the entire breadth of that um, differential. So let's take a look at the standaroos a second. 
Where are the Prosts? Okay, so Sardo has out-qualified the Prosts, so he's not a total dick biscuit. Um, and his tyres are now on temperature. That's good to know. That's good to know. So maybe we'll see an improvement from him. Put your boot down, old son. Let's just keep monitoring the track conditions as he goes out and does his lap. So 16th at the moment, keep an eye on this number when he crosses the line uh, to see if he has improved. Really, I want them both in the top 10, if at all possible. Um, I don't trust that Salo is capable of it, but um, Deniz definitely is capable of it, so it, it's down now to to me making the call as to when to send him out. Um, the end of the session can get quite hectic, and you want to avoid traffic as far as is possible. Um, I don't really want to send him out until the track's properly dry, if I can avoid it. So, coming into the final sector is Mr. Sarlo. What's the word on the street? And... Boom, up to 13th. Not fantastic. But I'll put him out on a fresh set of tyres and maybe we even improve on that ever so slightly. But that should put us in front of a Sauber and a Stuart, I believe. Both Stuarts and both Prosts and a Sauber. Okay, I can't be quite so mad at him now. That's actually not bad. Um, I had hoped for double top tens, but he is he has got us ahead of our um, main rivals. The sun has come out. That's fantastic news for us. Um... Tempting, tempting, tempting to put Deniz out while the traffic is... Yeah, yeah, the track has just dried out and gone up in temperature, so now is the time. Now is the time. Still not optimal rubber on there, but we'll put him out, and then they've both got a three-lap run left for when the rubber situation isn't exactly optimal, but certainly better than it is now. So, keep an eye on him, keep an eye on him. Actually, we only have 10 minutes remaining. Um, let's get him towards... Let's get him towards uh, putting his boot down and then I'll send Salo out again so we don't forfeit his last three laps. He's on the harder tyre anyway, so you know, nothing to gain necessarily by keeping him in now the track's dried out. Okay, extra three for you. His tyre wear still isn't going, but I'm going to put him on fresh tyres nevertheless. Off he goes. I'm not sure we're going to get the Niz round again. I'm hoping that we do. I'm hopeful. I'm genuinely tense because I know he's capable of doing it. I know the car's capable of doing it. I know the conditions are improving. There's, yeah, there's potential here. I'm sure of it. He's not hit any traffic this lap, which is great. I've not seen any sign of a lock-up or anything on the main camera. Um, go on, my son. Oh, no improvement. Bring him in, refuel him, send him out again. Um, I think it's because the tyres hadn't been through the heat cycle. Um, which might be a problem again for the nears, but let's see. Uh, not the Niz, Salo even. Actually, boot it round, the Niz. Uh, I can't have you coming in slowly because we're so tight for time. I believe as long as he finishes his outlap before the clock counts down, he can finish his fast lap. 
but we really are bringing it down to the wire now. Come on, Cocker. I mean, I'll take eighth. Don't get me wrong, I will take eighth, but I just, I can feel it in my bones that he's capable of better. Now, what about Solo? Better than 13th? No. Disappointment Central. Ah, uh, Denise is going to hit traffic if those Saubers don't get out of his way either. But I've got a fi he will be able to finish his fast lap. So, it's all riding on you now, Petty. I'm really, I, I'm genuinely uh, interested to see the first race of next season now. If we can just get the design of our car back on track, I'm really excited about having the Mugen power. Um, it's, it's a, it's a bigger immediate return. Oh, bit of a wobble there for Deniz. Um, let's hope, let's hope he keeps it on the track. Um, it provides a much bigger immediate leap in performance for us than we would otherwise have, but it just doesn't have that development potential. But I think as a, a year-long interim solution, we could have a reasonably competitive package next season. And if we can use that and leverage it to get sponsors on board that we might otherwise not have, get out of my way, Tyrrell, um, that could actually set us up for success much earlier than I'd anticipated. I mean, I... I thought we were looking at four to five seasons before we'd be winning a race, but, you know, if next season goes as well as I hope it will, um, we could we could be looking at three to four seasons instead. Um, unless we get fluky, I mean, you never know what's going to happen at Monaco, of course. Come on, finish this lap, son. That Tyrrell is in the way, though. That Tyrrell is in the way. No improvement. How close were we? Painfully close. Painfully close. He's still out qualified a Ferrari though. Still out qualified a Ferrari and both Jordans, so we can't sniff at that. And indeed we won't sniff at that. So well done to you, Pedro, and uh, sort of well done to, to Mikasalo, really. I mean realistically given where he's at at the moment, I don't think he can compete on the level of the Jordan, so it's only really Jean Alessi who's diddled him, and only by two tenths. Well, not even that. One tenth and a bit. All things considered, not a bad return to business. Um, thank you very, very much for joining me, and I hope you'll be with me for race day uh, some point this weekend, I hope. Possibly. Take care.